Alright, so what we're going to do today is look over one of Legend 88's games, and as I'm sure everyone knows, but I will repeat it again, Legend 88 is the professional who I looked at in my Professional vs. Amateur Don game, in which the amateur opened up Tengen, Legend took the corners, and the, the amateur proceeded to invade every 3-4 point around the board. That was a very memorable game, especially since you played them about five or six times. That was pretty memorable too. So before I begin, hello everyone in the chat. Thank you for dropping by. Because of my setup, I can't quite tell what your name is, I'm sorry. Uh, but yes, suffice it to say, in this game, Legend is white, and the Amateur is black. And we're going to try not to mess up the tree, that way I have something to actually upload to YouTube. Alright, that's the dream. That is the dream. Okay, so it looks like Amateur decides to take 3-4 point. Okay. And Professional, Legend 88, is just calmly taking his corners. Dual 4-4 four, four points. Nice, easy, flexible. Let's see. All right. Black approaches. Typically, we don't see a lot of pincering here because there's really no uh, good extension besides this one. Only time I see a pincer here uh, is usually when we've approached here first, and then if we're pincered, we can change directions. They follow up. We attack. They usually go into the corner. We get a wall and Sente do the nature of the Jiseki, and then we can go back and answer the stone. But here, one of the reasons why I love this guy's game is because he played so simply against players that I sometimes have trouble with. We all sometimes have trouble with them. And yet he makes it look so effortless. So I like that. I really like that. I also like that apparently I almost made a mistake because a tree has got some breaks in it. All right, so legend approaches high on the 3-4. Okie dokie. Black pincers tightly. All right, all right, all right. A couple of choices offhand. We can go corner. Probably not going to do something like this. This is rather uh, old style. You mentioned You'll find this mentioned in a couple of my shorties, that I'm not a big fan of the diagonal out. We wouldn't do this, typically, because it just gives away this side and we're not sure what the influence is here is going for. So yeah, generally speaking, playing this is most common. Yep, yeah, sure enough. See the attachment. Black keeps out of corner, white draws back, and I see that black plays fast. This is generally how we play these days. We don't really do this anymore. A bit too slow. Gives options to white. I mean, if you get stronger, you can play here. Maybe you can do it now just to uh, harass. Things like that. It's a little bit faster. A little bit faster. If white mistakenly goes into the corner, then we still have potential to maybe surround. Maybe play elsewhere first, then surround. Instead, white plays modern Jiseki. Black defends. And now we go to war over this point. Because there's, there's a Jiseki here that nobody likes, and that's when you connect, as we see here, which is normal in every variation. White comes up, normal in every variation. Black plays the Hane, still normal in every variation. However, 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 
What is not normal is this next move. We don't usually fight this. Most of the time we play here. And then just fight over this stone. Hmm. Kind of curious, kind of curious. He decides to fight this. And we don't usually play this way because of what you're probably about to see. Yep, the Atari. Uh-huh. And the Atari. Mm, yep, 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 yep. This is the reason. We take. Alrighty then. And the Atari again. Now, we look at this shape and we realize we don't want to be anybody on this board. Black is low and uninteresting, so we don't really want to be him. White has got a very, very unusual shape here, and we don't want to be him either. So both players are usually in agreement that this is just kind of bad. So we usually fight over this stone instead. Now, let's see. Black just played the Atari. You don't connect here, that's too slow. So you have options, you have options. You just got yourself some thickness, could just do with thickness. Uh, could take corner, but then he's probably gonna back off high. Could pincer, then black comes out. That's not so great. Could attach, but then this area is kind of small. What does white do? Ah, white decides to shoulder hit. Thickness obtained over here. Gonna keep this group low over here. That makes sense. Black keeps his territory. All right, all right, all right. I can dig it. And this actually bears looking at, because a lot of players, uh, Q players especially, would look at this and be like, all right, no brainer. Time to just do something else. That something else, probably going to be giving Sente directly back to our opponent so they can keep deciding what they want to do on the board. And then we lost our chance to attack this group potentially. So that move right there bears study fact that he's playing here as opposed to losing Sente and playing here. So alright. He says this is weak group. We're profiting. Cool. Black's responding. And responding. And responding. It's like third line territory. I'll ah, be all up in that stuff, yo. So he got himself third line across the board. And now here's another instance that bears scrutiny. Because a lot of people would be like, all right, I have influence. Kaplow. Ha 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 ha. You feel all. You have given me a wall, and now I can use it. Everything is going according to plan. What the problem with that is this is still in trouble. So that, that little wall is now three stones that have to kind of run to safety. So that wouldn't be a good idea. That wouldn't be a good idea. Instead, he's like, all right. Boom, I'm going to play here. Now. If you're looking at this on YouTube, I advise you to stop and try to figure out the second uh, reason behind this move. So I mentioned one of them. I mentioned one of them. But what is the other? Those of you watching the stream, I'm not going to uh, stop. I'm curious about what continues. Alright, so we've got a wall. We could think about the wall, or could do something else that's important. What do we do? Ah, uh, something about the wall. Off center, because this way can't get two space extension here. But here, uh, that, 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 
but here we can in both directions. So that's always important. Uh, correct, Nizumi. You are right about that. We're going to see it shortly, I would imagine. All right. So we push two thickness. Very, very important. This is wrong direction. This pushes away from thickness. And now what are we going to do with this group? Make a whopping no amounts of territory here? Yuck. No way, man. No way. We're not doing that. Instead, we're pushing towards thickness. There we go with that. And now, as Nizumi pointed out in chat, there's a liberty issue here. Because if black defends, which he does, maybe he should have played here, huh? But he plays here, and Black's like, I think you made a mistake, sir. White says to Black. And Black has no choice but to just nod his head and agree. It's like, yeah, that was a mistake. That was no good. I have done scribbled myself. Now I have to do something. I'm going to... See if I can't keep you separate. Let's try to fight this wall a little bit. Okay, okay. Seems to be Sente because we have to worry about uh, Zivan Stone. And what does White do now? Does White do something sneaky and tricky and try to play a larger move on the board that also answers that little uh, ladder that we have going here? So something like this or maybe this or that or something cool. No. He's just like, I'll take. Thank you. Come again. So, all right. Got that going. Blocks like my stones. Very important, not just randomly capturing. This way, uh, now that we're isolated, if we're not careful, uh, and that got connected, then these two points don't become eyes, uh, potentially. So, this way, we're all good. These stones are, these might be eyes. We can play here, we can play here, we can see eye shape. Um, was this supposed to go in the tray? I think so. It was in my hand for a reason. No, that might have been Black's move. Uh... Uh, yeah, that goes in the tray. Sweet. Sorry. Tiny brain freeze. Ah! There we go. He's living. Alright, that looks kind of alive. Sweet. Now what do we do? <sighs> this is a board that always makes us nervous a little bit. Because in the back of our minds, we say to ourselves, all right, this is worth something. See, the, see this wall? That wall is worth something. Crap. There we go. Let's not move the stones while I'm doing this. So yeah, that wall is worth something. This thickness is worth something. That large knight, that's worth something too. But the whole turning it into something is the part that can get kind of tricky. All right, so here we have to trust that this is worth something. And where many players might again think to themselves, dude, I have no points right now. I need a large point immediately. White instead says, I spy with my little eye two groups that may yet die. So he applies pressure. Now he has two two space extensions. Look at this. Look how perfect that is. They're almost completely opposite each other. Just the one one line away from being completely opposite. 
Uh, yes, Legend 88 is white. Now, black, I will commend him for being um, brave. Let's use that word. He, had, he pincers. To which white's like, um, do you realize I have a l attack on you? White, you do not have an attack on me, for I can live easily. So says white, in, or so says black in that accent. White's just going to calmly surround, because that's worth stuff. And admit it, you've been in this situation before, right? You've attacked something, and for frack's sake, man, you're surrounding, and they're just living, and that's so annoying. Why do we even bother playing this way? If they just live like that, so easy. It's much better to play like black, right? Much, much better to play like black, because, I mean, he's at least getting some stuff here. He's, he's getting points. Where are the points for white? Where are they? Do you see them? Of course not. They don't exist yet. So, all right. Cast them up. But white questions the connection. Black's like, no, no questions. I am connected. White says, but what about your corner? He's like, you fool, I'm going to respond and live there as well. You get nothing, sir. Good day. White plays the Hane. Forcing black to respond. Defend ourselves. Forcing black to again respond. He's alive. He lived. Yeah. But that allows Hane to head of two stones. Black responds because he doesn't want to die. Then extends out. Black follows. And white plays the Hane because he knows. He knows that that cut would be deadly. That is the capture. So all right, free Hane for everyone. Has to defend, and again defends. All right, sweet. Now, again, I kind of find it interesting because remember, this is Legend 88, the player who I showed that wonderful at night game to. Um, you remember, amateur open Tengen. White took corners, black invaded them all, thinking he will be uncomfortable with influence. I will live and make territory. Sound familiar? Your influence does not matter. Sound familiar? As long as I have all of these points to myself. Sound familiar? This is kind of a common theme when you start getting players who are uh, slowly getting in that dawn range, are kind of strong. They know, man, I can live no matter where, ever I need. I'm going to live there. You can't kill me. What's the matter with you? Why are you even trying? I've studied life and death for a long time, okay? You just leave me alone. But yeah, influence is a it actually has value. Go figure. So again... We're trying to figure out what to do here. I would recommend immediate defense. All hands to battle stations, let's defend the weak groups. Black, on the other hand, is like, dude, this influence only thing is cute and all, but I'm just gonna take all your territory away. White's like, I'm pissed. <laughs> Territory's all yours, bro. Have at it. Have at it. Have all the territory. Tell you what. 
that corner it's yours now all yours do you want to invade everywhere and live with almost no groups knock yourself out or no territory rather knock yourself out Not the cleanest life in the world, but hey, he's alive now. So now what? We've done lost all our corners. All of them are gone. All of them are gone. Well, we're trying to build up that area. Still got a weak group that failed to jump. In fact, if we had to think up the perfect move on this board for black right now, it would be right here. And there's a proverb that does usually state that your opponent's best move may, may it might be yours as well. And here we see a uh, nice example of it. Because by keeping this low, we're building. That's a good thing. Actually, I think that looks like a thumbs down to you, doesn't it? It, it turn hand. There we go. Now, many of you would say, it's time to defend this group. We have to defend the group. It, it's obvious that the group needs defended. But we know what kind of player Black is. Black is the kind of player that will invade you everywhere on the board cause dude he studied himself life and death right he knows how to live so with that in mind he's gonna go live that's his strategy he knows how to live So now, oops, sorry, that move was there, my bad. I forgot in all my gesturing which moves I actually placed and which ones I only pointed to. All right, so here's crunch time. Does this influence amount to anything? Or does black have uh, the secret of the game all uncovered? Just live, just live. All right, so where are we weak? We've got multiple weak points here. We do not want to see a cut. So our response is a given. Put pressure and defend the cuts. Excellent, excellent first move. If you're trying to go, like, go and cap and allow your opponent to just attach or cut or both, bad news bears. Instead, protects and attacks. Black's like, check me, I'm gonna live. Black's like, eh, I can live in this area. And white, just calm as ever. This is why I review this guy's games, man. Because what does he do now? Now does he go back and cap? Does he go and throw in and try to reduce? What does he do? Does he do something like this? Cap from this side? No. He's just like, alright, I'm going to connect and make sure that you can't go anywhere. Holy crap, that's pretty steady. That is a, that is, that is a good move. If you're playing moves like this, then you understand the game, okay? You understand that's not alive. That can't live. Do small knights make two eyes? No, they don't. That small knight needs to go somewhere. I know where it can try to go. It can try to go to the left hand side, to this side of the board. Or it can try to go there, where there's already a stone in place. But it's not going to live locally. 
<sighs> quite nice, quite nice, quite nice. So alright. Black says, you fool. You gave me another move in your area of influence. Now what are you going to do? And Black's and White's just like, eh, you know what? I can count to two. One. Two. Two weak groups. Ah, ah, ah. Because keep in mind, not only does he have this area, at any time, he can Hane and lock Black out of this area too. So, who cares? He could play this, right? Force this to live if it even can, which maybe it can, maybe it can't. But even if that lives, and even if this lives, wall, 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 cap, and lock. That's still a, that's still territory, man. But all right, so here we go. Try to live here. Black says, I've studied life and death. I need to maximize my area for eye space. White's like, yep, good, congrats. Now what? It's like, I'm going to pull back. Pull back, you say, says White. But defended I am. That cut is not a threat. Defend it, I will not. Eyes, where are they? Show me, I am curious. Black cuts off. White says, um, I'm connected. Black says, no, you are not. White disagrees. I'm really connected. And now we see that perhaps White was telling the truth. He is, in fact, connected. Because if we go here as an actual game, then we can cut. And if he drew this back, then we kill the stones. So what is this man's plan? Well, looks like it's the Atari. And everyone here should be able to know that it's kind of easy to kill out now. So, connects. Tries to cut. Says, excuse me, dude, but that's already defended. I got good shape. White says, well, Black says, maybe I can do something here. White says, nope, nothing there. At which point, Black can do absolutely nothing but resign. And so he does. So there you have it. Nice, solid play. No, no weird, you know, professional tricks or anything, right? This is just the most solid play you can possibly think of. This is a nice example of... Uh, playing the urgent moves we saw with the shoulder hit uh, before big moves, taking random points over there in Gote or, um, what was it? or approaching, rather and letting this just go back and settle however it wanted So we have a lot of really, really great ideas like this. And normally, we don't actually see this in pro v pro play. So I'm always on the lookout to look at professional versus amateur play. So even just for myself, to reinforce these points, this sort of nice, patient, and solid play. Because they are very, very strong moves. Even if you can't quite tell that uh, when you first start looking at them. Like over there, give my opponent multiple moves in the middle? Why would I do that? 
Because it makes me strong. He stole the heart of nowhere. And there's no reason to let him come out, put my group in danger, while he's obviously strengthening himself. Why, why do that? I mean, if that wasn't there, and we tried capping him instead, then it's easy to see some sort of idea where maybe our opponent instead gets to try to surround and kill us. And there was no reason to invite this sort of possibility, even remotely from occurring. No reason to. Not when with just one move. We can keep our groups nice and strong, and his nice and weak, without Aji to use against us. So yeah, I thought this was a very cool game. Very cool game. I love it when pros rank up um, from the ground up on Taigem, because these little gems are definitely worth study. Whoa, I screwed that one up. There we go. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this game. Definitely one I'll be uploading onto the YouTubes. I will be doing another Legend 88 game every night for probably the next two weeks until I am out of Legend 88 games. I've got 15 on my hard drive. This is the second one. Don't ask about the first one. You're never going to see it on YouTube ever. Unless I redo it. Because that was brutal with mistakes. But yeah. You'll see this and more. Hope you enjoyed them. And I'll see you guys next time.